Uncivilized Vitality, another packing list. This is gonna be for our upcoming uh, nocturnal hike. So we're gonna be going out and hiking <clears throat> uh, during the dark. So this is gonna necessitate a couple of different pieces of gear and a little bit uh, different attitude toward packing because hiking at night is uh, typically dangerous. Human beings being diurnal animals tend to move around in, in the daytime when we can see stuff and not at night when there are large predators out and hidden uh, unseen dangers. To make it more exciting, we're gonna be hitting a trail that's along a very steep gorge uh, down to a river in northern Michigan because <laughs> just make it more exciting. Uh, the main piece of kit we're going to use for this is going to be uh, to learn about a walk walking sticks or a hiking staff or a yard stick uh, or the importance of using a stick at night uh, to find your way along. Uh, I'll do a separate video on various walking sticks you can take on the nocturnal hike but here's a basic camping list. First find and review our emergency camp packing list or our pockets and pouch uh, line of gear one of those videos that we've got several of that talk about things you should have on your person at all time um, a way to start fire backup emergency like a ferro rod and a whistle will be on your person at all times some sort of light uh, a couple of knives a small belt knife and a multi-tool these things should be on your person uh, at all times if you don't have pockets you can keep your stuff like that in the small pouch. This is my SOE FUPA. Um, I have a tourniquet in there. My, for instance, right now, my pistol and spare mag are in there, but I keep my multi-tool and a couple of other things in there. So if you don't have the pockets, keep these things in your purse or your pouch. Here's the things you're gonna need for nocturnal hike. We're only gonna be sleeping for brief amounts of time uh, during the day, so you won't need uh, a lot. You're gonna need a bag to carry it in. This is my Hill People Gear uh, Aston 3. So there's plenty of room. It's a small enough bag. While it's compatible for hip belt, because we're going to be traveling so light, um, I'm not necessarily going to use the hip belt. So you want a bag, a backpack that doesn't necessarily have a belt. If you require the hip belt for a nocturnal hike, you're going to be carrying too much. Okay. You don't need as much because we're going to be hiking and moving most of the time instead of setting a base camp. And then uh, we're gonna be sleeping during the warm parts. So you're gonna be able to cut down on the amount of gear you need. Toward that end, I do suggest bringing a pair of um, wicking or long underwear that you can put on at night if the hike becomes too cold or in the early morning when we stop, if you need to warm up a little bit, having a um, warm dry set of clothes, including a big thick pair of wool socks to sleep in, that's gonna be important to have. Further protection is you're going to want to keep a pair of work gloves or leather gloves with you, not so much for warmth, but just to wear for protection while you're on the trail at night. A requirement for the nocturnal hike is going to be a pair of, I have so much cord in my pocket, a pair of safety glasses. I forgot to bring a pair of clear safety glasses for the demo, so they're just my reading glasses. You're going to want to wear glasses at night, if you don't wear eyeglasses to see, which I probably will overnight instead of my contact lenses, you have to wear a pair of safety glasses. Uh, walking at night is dangerous, not uh, least uh, for which it are pirate makers. Little sticks that stick out, jab you in the eye, and then you got one eye and you're a pirate. Arr, remember that, pirate makers from when you were little? So you have to have a pair of safety glasses. Another piece of kit you might wanna have is, as the sun goes down or walking at night, my, my cover here, to keep the sun off is not as warm as wearing maybe a wool buff on my head as I walk. Once I'm starting to dissipate heat, I might want to take that off. My wife pointed out earlier, one of the things she does with her um, buff when she's walking, uses this as a, as a hand muffler so she can walk in it. Keeps your hands warm while you're walking or hiking, but you can immediately uh, pull your hands out very quickly if you're gonna have a fall or you need to walk or something. But if you need to warm your hands up for a minute while you're walking, your buff can work in that capacity as well, All right? So those are, and then your course clothing item would just be your uniform. I wouldn't suggest a pair of heavy boots, but you don't wanna hike in sandals either, especially at night. You're gonna be stubbing your foot on rocks and, and roots uh, quite a bit probably. So the normal amount of dress with some warming layers and protective layers like the eyeglasses uh, is important. Now, uh, because we're gonna be sleeping during the day, I'm just bringing one blanket, probably just my swag man and 
uh, my hammock, right? So I'll find a place, throw my hammock up. If it's real nice, I might just lay down on the ground and lay down on top of my tarp or poncho and sleep. But I have my swag man and my hammock. In case we have inclement weather and we need to set up uh, more of a shelter, I will be carrying a nine by nine uh, Dyneema tarp and my cordage straps, pitch kit, uh, tent stakes, all the things I need to make a shelter for myself and my wife who will be carrying her own uh, hammock and blankets. Right? Drop those things down in there. Uh, we'll each have a poncho. Gotta have a poncho for a ground cloth or to use during inclement weather. You will need two fast ropes and one carabiner at least. Two carabiners is better, one for each fast rope, but at least two fast ropes and a carabiner. Uh, for nocturnal hike, I'd make sure they're either reflective or brightly colored. So you're gonna wanna bring your fast ropes. And just stuff those in there too. Right. Now, obviously we're gonna have um, a trauma kit and boo-boo box for the entire group. We'll be carrying those as we usually do. But if you wanna carry your own personal trauma kit and tourniquet uh, in your pouch or on your person and little boo-boo box, that's never a bad idea to include that gear. My wife and I will be sharing the boo-boo box and trauma kit so we don't both have to carry that. You will need, of course, your toilet kit, your wipes, your hand sanitizers, a small trowel, um, and some toilet paper, some uh, feminine products, whatever you need in your personal toilet kit. I suggest making your toilet kit in a very brightly colored bag or something that's easily identifiable, maybe a small carabiner to hang it up or set it down when you're doing your business. In a second toiletry kit, you're gonna to wanna to put your meds, your, your um, if you have personal meds, uh, your toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, that kind of uh, personal hygiene stuff. Keep that separate from your, your actual doo-doo bag, your poop bag, toilet bag, I don't know what we're gonna call it. Okay. You're gonna need metal canteen, uh, secondary metal container, probably just a nesting cup, maybe, um, just like this platypus two liter, maybe another water container or a second steel bottle to go with your bag. As always, I suggest having a life straw because you know, things happen and you might not be able to purify water by getting a fire started in the downpouring rain or something. We probably are going to bring the water filter. We'll have one for the group so we can pump some water when we stop in the morning, we'll top everybody off. All right. So if you want to carry your own filter, that's fine, but we'll try to avoid uh, a lot of gear redundancies with the group, right? The life straw being an exception. Uh, then since we do, we, we are talking about stopping, you'll have your food bag and then you can bring a small stove or a propane fired uh, canister stove in case we have to warm our meals. If it's raining in the morning, no one's going to feel like getting a fire started uh, for cooking. So we might be just firing up and cooking on the small stoves. Then, of course, with my cooking kit and my food bag, I bring something to eat with, so I don't have to whittle chopsticks, and, of course, my salt. Okay. Um, if we do start a fire, or if I need natural fuel for my, my little stove, a way to process wood. Just a folding saw, Baco Laplanders, uh, tried and true, or maybe even the small saw on my multi-tool, or I can just process wood with my belt knife. But having that saw is nicer because if we want to get maybe a smaller or a larger group fire besides the stoves, that'll help. Now, the main thing about nocturnal hiking, we do a separate video on the walking sticks. And I already said you had to have the safety glasses. The rest is just kind of hiking for or packing for like a, uh, a brief day hike you would take. Maybe some possibility of sleeping overnight uh, that'll be reversed. We'll hike at night, sleep during the day. Lighting. We're going to have a headlamp. Uh, I just have this little flashlight that kind of converts to a headlamp and clips on different places. You need to have a fully charged uh, headlamp and or normal headlamp with some spare batteries. And you need to have at least one glow stick uh, per night and an extra. So everybody's going to have to bring three glow sticks. We're going to be wearing one on the back of our packs or on our person as we hike in a line. And then we're going to be using one the second night. And then we might need a third one for some reason. So bring at least three glow sticks per person. You can put them in your pocket or in your pack, okay? And then the last piece of gear, besides the stuff that's already on your person, 
like in the emergency uh, emergency gear packing list, the pockets and pouch. Last thing I forgot to mention here would be your uncivilized hood. Okay, you're going to be using this a lot during this uh, nocturnal hike. This comes in handy for when we stop. You can drop this down. All right, roll this over. Now you got a place to sit, keep your bum dry. You've got a place to do uh, small shavings of firewood and a clean space to work for your food. You can throw this over your neck as you hike in case you're getting cold while you hike. All right. You can use this as a extra layer in case we've overestimated how warm it's going to be and that single blanket turns out to have been a terrible, terrible mistake, but we'll see. Now, I'm bringing a single blanket. You might want to bring more. My wife's going to have her swag man uh, and a blanket for her hammock. Uh, one for the under quilt, one for the blanket inside. I will probably, during the daylight hours, just use my swag man as the under quilt, wrap up in my hood, collapse inside my hammock and be ready to roll. So this would be what you would need to bring for the nocturnal hike coming up in addition to the walking stick and I'm going to do a separate video maybe Rendell can do one of those magic things and I point like right here and it does the little thing where it shows that video uh, we'll see oh and then down here she could do the video back to the emergency kit <laughs> no pressure Rendell okay like share subscribe uh, let us know in the comments if you've been on one of our hikes our specialty hikes before like the nocturnal hikes or the snowshoe hikes um, or the emergency uh, hikes that we're doing, and um, that's it.